I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on Crack SAT. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for participating actively and posting their questions. Now, based on the requirements, here are 10 questions for you. These questions are as per the new SAT format, and we look into uh, some of these questions which may need calculator, right? So, you are allowed calculator. However, Use the calculator only when required or necessary, as at times it might just waste your time. Now, we'll solve these questions one by one and also understand the basic concepts while solving the questions. The idea here is to understand few topics in details. These are polynomials, rational functions, trigonometry, complex numbers, and probability, right? These are our major topics which we are going to cover with the help of these 10 questions. So let's begin with the very first one, which is what is true about the polynomial 2x to the power of 5 plus x cubed minus 3x? Four choices are given to you. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now in this polynomial, you see all the exponents are odd, right? So, so this particular polynomial is basically a odd function. So in odd function, f of minus x is equals to minus of f of x. So we have to use this property and then answer the question. So f of minus x is equal to minus of f of x. So the option B is the right option. f of minus x equals to minus of f of x. The next question here is, Find the value of 2x plus 3x squared divided by 4x minus 5x squared as x approaches 0. The key to understand here is as x approaches, right? So, so x is approaching 0. x is not equal to 0. So 0 is not the right answer, right? If I substitute 0, we get 0 over 0 otherwise also, right? But anyway, 0 is not your right answer. How do you find the right answer in this particular case? So what we are going to do is just factor out x from numerator and denominator. So if I factor x, I get 2 plus 3x, right? Over, if I factor x from here, I get x, 4 minus 5x, correct? So as you can see, x and x will cancel, right? Now if I substitute x as 0, what do I get? I get 2 over 4, right? So if x approaches 0, these two terms will approach 0, right? So we get 2 over 4, which is equal to half. So 0 0.5 is the correct option. So do you understand this part, right? So, so in this particular case, since x is approaching 0, these two terms will approach 0, right? And we are left with 2 over 4, which is half. Now, here is a variation to this question, question 2b. Find the value when x approaches infinity, right? So, find the value when x approaches infinity. Now, in the same expression, if x is approaching infinity, right, in that case, the answer should be 3 over minus. In that case, y will approach minus 3 over 5, correct? That could be a variation to our question number 2. Perfect. Now let's see question number 3 now, which is find x cubed if 4x to the power of 5 is 16x squared. So without thinking, use calculator now, correct? So we could simplify this. We are given 4x to the power of 5 is equals to 16 squared. So x to the power of 5 is 16 squared divided by 4. Correct? So x will be equal to, you could simplify this, we have 16 squared divided by 4 to the power of 1 over 5. Correct? And if I want cube of this, right, so if I, I really want cube, if I want cube of this, then I have to cube all this. So that should be your answer, right? So use your calculator to calculate the answer. Start from inside out. So this is probably the fastest way of doing it. So 16 squared uh, divided by 4, we get this inside bracket. 
and now we'll do the power of 1 over 5 right so we'll do exponent 1 divided by 5 correct and then so in this particular case we could start from inside out so we have 16 square divided by 4 and we get our answer as 64 now to 64 we will find exponent of 5 over 3 right so we could say uh, 3 divided by 5 over the, uh, equals 2 right so that gives us an answer equals to 12.1 right so that is how you could rearrange the exponents and get your answer which is c for you is that clear right so that is how you are going to simplify first square and then divide otherwise you might get a wrong answer the next question here is when 4 times the number y is subtracted from 9 that means 9 minus 4y when 4 times the number y is subtracted from 9 the result is 21 the result is 21 correct what number results when 4 times y when 4 times y is added to when added to 30 is equal to what so that is your question correct so read carefully form the equations then get the answer so from the first equation we can actually solve for y right so taking 4y to the right side we get 4y equals to 9 minus 21 so y is 9 minus 21 over 4 correct so let's figure this out so we have 9 minus 21 which is equal to negative 12 divided by 4 is equal to negative 3 so we get a value of y as negative 3 now substitute negative 3 here. So 4 times negative 3 plus 30 equals to what? So we already have negative 3. We'll multiply by 4 and then to this add 30. So what you get is 18. So our answer is 18. Do you see? Even while using your calculator, you have to be very efficient and then you save time. So I hope that makes sense. Correct? Now let's take the next question, which is question number 5. If x plus 3y over y is 1, 2 over 3, find the value of y over x. So, so we have to rearrange somehow and find y over x. So let's start with the equation, which is x plus 3y over y equals 2. Now this mixed number could be written as 5 over 3. 1 times 3 plus 2. What did we do? 1 times 3 plus 2. To get the numerator, denominator remains same. Correct? So we get 5 over 3. Now, we don't really have to think about solving or substituting the values. We need to find what y over x is. We could break this up. So we have x over y plus 3y over y equals to 5 over 3. So that is, you can see clearly, y and y cancel you're left with 3. So x over y is 5 over 3 minus 3, which could be written as 3 common denominator, 5 minus 9, right? So let's find this value. So we have 5 minus 9 equals 2, divided by 3 equals 2, minus 4 over 3. Correct? So this value minus 4 over 3 is x over y. We want y over x. So clearly y over x should be negative 3 over 4, which is our option B, right? So that is a way to rearrange your fractions and get the answer. Perfect. Question number 6. Now trigonometry is a huge component of new SAT. So you need to practice with trigonometry a bit. If 4 sine square x minus 6 sine x plus 2 equals to 0, x is between 0 to 90 degrees, find cosecant x. So this is like a quadratic equation. So let's solve it. 4 sine square x minus 6 sine x plus 2 equal to 0. We need to factor to solve, right? So as you can see here, we have product of two numbers, which could be 4 times 2, 8, and we need the sum of two numbers to be minus 6. So these numbers could be what? Well, 4 times 2, right? Both negative will give, give you minus 6. So let's write this as equal to 4 sine square x minus 
4 sin x minus 2 sin x plus 2 equals to 0 and that is 4 sin x can be taken as common you get sin x minus 1 right and here minus 2 is common so you get again sin x minus 1 equals to 0 now sin x minus 1 is common in these two so we get 4 sin x minus 2 equals to 0 so that gives you two solutions one is that sin x is equal to 1 the other one is sin x equals to 2 over 4 or half correct so these are the two solutions you need what you need to find what cosecant is right now cosecant x is actually 1 over sin x so reciprocal right so here you get 1 in this case cosecant x is 2 right reciprocal correct so option a is the right option does make sense to you perfect so we've done more than half of the paper and these are some difficult questions which we are working on correct question number seven and question number eight i'd like you to pause the video answer these questions and then look into my suggestions question number seven is a difficult question based on probability two fair dice are thrown find the probability of getting two consecutive integers like numbers like one two two three three four like that right so four options are given to us how do we solve this so in probability uh, the probability of the event a is equal to favorable over total number of events right so whenever you throw two dice total number of events will be six times six there are six numbers on each so the denominator is 36 now what is favorable that is what we need to figure out and that is a tricky part right so this is what we need to figure out now when we say consecutive it means what now out of these 36 choices how many will turn out to be like one two two three and all that so what we can do is we can begin with number like if first die has one in that case the other could have only two as one number so we have one option do you see that but if i have two here then the other die we could have one or three so we have two options for consecutive numbers right so there are two dies if one of them has one on it the option for a consecutive number is only one so there's only one way we could get it but if it turns out to be two then we have one and three two options perfect now even when it is three four or five for all of them we will have two options right so we'll have two options each perfect but for six let me write on top only five will give a consecutive number so we'll have one option does it make sense so count the number of options so with one and six we have just one option correct but with two three four and five we have two options each so how many options are there we have 10 options in all which will give us consecutive numbers right so that is the probability of getting a consecutive numbers right find the probability of getting two consecutive integers it is 10 over 36 do you see that 10 over 36 now that could be reduced we can divide both by 2 so we get uh, 5 over 18 which is option a correct so that is how you're going to solve it now here is a variation to question 7 so question 7b could be we have to find probability of non-consecutive numbers that could be the case right so in that case that will be let me call this as p a dash will be one minus probability of event a correct so that will be the answer for non-consecutive right do you does it make sense to you perfect okay let's move on and take uh, next question which is question number eight in a circle with center o central angle x o y has a measure of 2 pi by 3 radians the major arc x y 
formed by the central angle x o y is what fraction of the circumference of this circle okay so let's sketch and then try to understand the situation let's say this is our circle okay so that's the circle and we are seeing angle of 2 pi by 3 how much is that angle do you have a sense of it so pi by 3 means pi is divided into three equal parts and we are getting into second one so one two so it is this much right so that is what it is correct so you can see from here this is your x this is o and y now that is your minor arc and this one is your major arc so if this angle here is 2 pi by 3 what is the major angle well total should be 2 pi right so so to get total 2 pi that you could say like this that this is being divided into 6 this is equal to 6 pi by 3 do you see that so how many pi by 3 6 in all so this is 4 pi by 6 sorry 4 pi uh, sorry 4 pi by 3 so 2 plus 4 is 6 and then you get 2 pi does it make sense or you could do 2 pi minus 2 pi by 3 to get the other angle is that okay so that gives you 6 pi minus 2 pi by 3 and that is equals to 4 pi by 3 so that is the other angle correct so you could find you need to find the other angle correct now you can find this is your major arc so when we are saying major arc means this side of your graph circle right so that is the major arc so the ratio has to be the ratio of circumference and the arc is same as the angle correct so the ratio of uh, arc to circumference is equal to angle which is 4 pi by 3 to circumference is 2 pi correct 2 pi that is what the answer is correct so that gives you 4 pi by 3 times 2 pi and that is pi and pi cancels we get 2 over 3 as our answer so option c is the right option does make sense to you so that is how we are going to answer this question now radiance is very important topic to understand so i like you to do some more practice questions on this topic also we are almost at the end here is the ninth question find the angle oab if a triangle is formed by joining the segment a 0 0 2 b is 3 4 0 and the origin 0 0 0 so we are talking about three dimensional figure so let's just sketch one so look at the corner of the room to sketch your three-dimensional figure. So this is your x-axis, this is y and that is z. When I say A002, that means the point is somewhere here, right? So that is your point A, which is two units along the z-axis, right? B is 3, 4, 0 that means it is in x y plane right so you move three units here four units that side so you're somewhere there so let me just say this is the point okay let's say this is the point which is b three four zero now what do you need to find the angle o a b so let me join them The angle which we are interested in finding is this angle. Now in this particular triangle, you will notice that this is always 90 degrees, correct? Since we are talking about z-axis and xy plane, so it is normal, therefore it is 90 degrees, perfect? So it's a very simple question now. We need to find the length OB. We already know OA, right? So what is the length OB? So we'll say O to B is square root of 3 square plus 4 square plus 0 square, which is equal to 9 plus 16, which is 5, 3, 4, 5, as you know, right? So that length is 5 units. And now we can use tan 
of angle A which is opposite over adjacent side 5 over 2 right so A the angle A equals to tan inverse of 5 over 2 so that is how we can find the answer right so we'll do shift tan inverse 5 divided by 2 equals to 68.192 so we get an answer which is 68.2 degrees okay so that is the answer unfortunately none of these so I think uh, those are not the right answers so we'll add an option E to this so the answer should have been 68.2 degrees okay so that that is the answer right sorry for there is some typing error here okay so I should have rounded to 68 some number which is which is missing from here so okay so that is how you're going to find the solution of this problem is that clear to you right once again since we have point b in xy plane and point a in along the z axis at o we have a 90 degrees angle and therefore we can use primary trigonometric ratios right so i use primary trigonometric ratio so cut to work So tan is opposite over hypotenuse, oh sorry, adjacent, I'm so sorry. Tan is opposite over adjacent side, so opposite is 5, 5 divided by 2. That is tan. To find the angle, we'll do tan inverse of 5 over 2 and get our answer. Perfect. It comes to 68.2 degrees, which is the right option. Is it okay? Last question. Which of the following equations could have... 6 plus 2i as its root. So we are given quadratic equation and we are looking into the complex numbers now. Now complex numbers is again a topic which needs a lot of practice. Let us see how to answer such a question. Now one way is that uh, we could find the equation directly since we know one of the root is, we know one of the roots is 6 plus 2i the other root should be what 6 minus 2i right since we always have these roots as complex conjugate right so we always have conjugate roots perfect so these are the two roots the best way to find the solution is that we know our equation in general will be x squared minus sum of roots times x plus product of roots. So basically, we could find sum and product, right? So what is the sum? That is x1 plus x2 is what? So when you add them, 2i and minus 2i cancel, we get sum of 12, right? So minus 12, so we get x squared minus 12. And now we have to write 12x, right? Now we have to write the product. That is, when you multiply these, then what do you get? That is, x1 times x2 is what? Do 6 plus 2y times 6 minus 2y. So it's like you get a square minus b square, right? So we get a square, which is 6 square minus 2i square, right? 6 square is 36 and minus 2i square is 4i square which is 4 right so we get this as 40 so this sum here should be 4040 so that is the answer so we get d as our answer correct so i square is negative 1 i square is negative 1 so we get 36 plus 4 which is 40 so i hope that makes sense right so that is how we are going to solve this particular question i hope these 10 questions help you to practice further and get excellent marks. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Share my videos with your friends. Thank you and all the best.